when something is so mouthwateringly juicy, so satisfyingly crispy, so perfectly hand-breaded that you just want it all to yourself? You don't have to share, but it'd be a lot cooler if you did. The new Zaxx Pack for two. With eight chicken fingers, double the fries, two drinks, and that world-famous Zaxx sauce. Twice the flavor for just $14.99. Only at Zaxby's. Try it with fried pickles for a limited time. Order ahead, drive through, or get it delivered. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, proudly presented by Zaxby's. Indescribably good! I'm Aslan Hudjavandi alongside Corey Clark. We work for Warchant.com, the ultimate seminal sports source. Use the promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access. Uh, Corey coming off his birthday weekend is ready to rock and roll. I don't know if he had Zaxby's. That's probably the only thing that could have made his birthday weekend better because uh, Brady Brady did a little something, huh? Yeah, yeah. Brady had a uh, had a good tournament this weekend. Another one that's two in a row and uh, hit his first career home run. Uh, a bomb to left center field. And it was the night before, the day before, he had hit a couple that got, went right to the fence. One hopped over, like uh, hopped into the fence. Another one, a kid caught with his back on the fence. Like oh. if the kid hadn't been there, it would have been a home run. So Brady was pretty upset about that. And then his very first at bat the next day, he uh, he crushes one. I would, if I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, I didn't have a measuring tape with me or anything, but I feel like it went about about 410 feet. Nice. Where was yeah, it? I mean, Whereabouts? Power alley, straight up center Left field. center. Left, left center. center power alley, and it was a ball that was about neck high okay. that he just tomahawked out. Oh, man. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Shanna was taking video, and uh, uh, which she started doing this weekend for some reason. I don't think she'd ever done it before, but she was videoing, and, uh, you know, right when the ball goes over the fence, all of a sudden all you see is sky and clouds oh. because she's jumping up and down, <laughs> and then you see the ground. It looked like something out of the Blair Witch Project. Just all of a sudden you see the ground and nothing else, and you just hear all these sounds. I tell you, being in local TV for so long and, and being a sportscaster, you, you obviously are out there filming your highlights that you put in your sportscast. Baseball is singular, uh, by far, the most difficult sport to film. I remember the guy that ended up sort of like dethroning me in Montana, which is another story that I don't have ever really dove into, and I will one of these days. I did number one. I didn't know you were sitting on a throne. Yeah, and then I didn't know you got dethroned. I got usurped. I was the sports director, and then they brought in a guy who was literally seventy-two years old, who had just gotten canned in Idaho to come take the job. Uh, but like I was kind of, I wasn't on my way out. I was looking to leave, but when that happened, I was like, because no, the guy was an absolute jerk to me. But anyhow, right. he, we, we never agreed on anything. But that was the one thing I always remember. He's like, Aslan, listen. He's like, knock it off with all this Legion baseball nonsense. He's like, baseball is the one sport that was never meant to be filmed by with only or only meant, it was never meant to be filmed by only one camera. And it's so true. Like if you watch a major league game, or if you watch ACC Network Plus when the Knolls were on, or the softball team, you know you got the the camera in the outfield filming the pitch, and then as soon as the the, the batter hits and makes contact, flips yeah. to another camera, and then he's rounding first base. It flips to that camera, and then back to that. It just it's uh, it's tough to make it happen. Yeah, but that's really awesome. Hard. That that's awesome that uh, that got captured on camera for Brady. So it lives in posterity, big guy. Yeah, we got it. We got it on video forever. I nobody was filming my uh, yeah. first and only career home run. So yeah, yeah it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, while you were watching your son make you proud and uh, probably sweating off the remaining toxins of the ultra in your system, Florida State great. Not well. I shouldn't say Florida State great. Florida State alum. Daniel Berger won the first PGA Tour event uh, coming out of the uh, COVID crisis. So I, I think Florida State is going to probably be the answer to a trivia question somewhere down the line. You know, like you know, who won the first uh, professional golf event after the great plague of right. 2020? Daniel Berger. I, I wouldn't quite. I don't know if we'd, we'd classify it as after it. I feel like we've, we've just adjusted to it. I feel like we're kind of still in the midst of it <laughs> when you look at these numbers. By the way, the testing continues to go through the roof, though. Let's go. On Saturday, it was like 590,000 tests. Like it was 100,000 more than the most we'd ever had before. Okay. Um, it was awesome. So it really does feel like, 
And you need it because you see all these stories. The only reason I bring it up, I know you didn't bring it up for this, and we'll get back to Burger. But the only reason I bring up the testing numbers is because you see all these stories about seven guys at one school getting uh, testing positive or 10 guys at another school or 10 athletes. And it's like, man, that's just going to be the case. But if you have enough testing to test everyone routinely and repeatedly, hopefully you'll be okay and you'll be able to withstand it. And, um, you know, none of these kids uh, get too, too sick because they're in very good shape. They're young. That doesn't seem what COVID typically attacks. And hopefully, I keep saying this, I'm, I don't know, but hopefully the heat will have something to do with it. But yeah, on uh, like as far as making it, you know, maybe less mortal, I don't know, not mortal. What's the word I'm looking for? Fatal um, for older folks. But back to Berger. Yeah, man, uh, I think I saw on Twitter that he's the ninth Florida State grad to have over, um, to, to, to win three times on the PGA Tour. He became the ninth Florida State grad to have three PGA Tour wins. I mean, I... You would, I mean, I Kepka, Zinger, and then uh, Jeff Sluman, I think, oh, would be Slim. one. Hu- Hubert Green, um, the great Hubert, Hubert Green. Green. All right. Um, Jonas Blixt. M- maybe Jonas ever? Blixt. Yeah. I know he won two. He might have won three. That's the um, yeah. So, and that, so either way, though, like that's a really cool, another cool feather in the cap for Trey Jones. Yes, right. um, the Daniel Berger. Um, man, what a life it is to. Can you imagine that life? Like, I know he struggled. I don't think he'd won in a couple years. Um, and I know he'd had a, a pretty bad injury uh, that he came back from that. He was really emotional after that kid missed that putt. I shouldn't yeah. say kid after that young young man missed that putt in the playoff hole. And like I was I was explaining to Stephanie because she's like most you know maybe novice golf fans. She she hadn't heard of Daniel Berger, and I'm like, yeah, that's the crazy thing. I would guess most of the country probably hasn't heard of Daniel Berger. Golf fans certainly have because he's been on the tour for a while, but normal people haven't. And I looked up his career earnings. He's over. He's like uh, right at fifteen million dollars. Fifteen. Fifteen million dollars, and that's just in earnings. Good. And that so imagine with the sponsorships and everything else, and that yeah. life. All the perks, like I'm free sure he's jet, jet, yeah, jet man. Everywhere. And like their next, their next stop is in Hilton Head. Yeah. And it's like you know now that I've kind of caught in the golf, caught the golf bug here the last month. Right. And the, just the thought of like, oh, my job is to just go around with all these other dudes that play golf play golf all the time at these awesome resorts, at these awesome country clubs, and make a, a boatload of money doing it. What a life. It's funny. I talked to Berger, too. Um, back when he was at Florida State, I did a story on him. And I remember Trey Jones at the time talking about Berger saying, yeah, he, he tells me all the time he's the best athlete on campus. And this was when Jameis was there. And I remember talking to him. I remember specifically I was in his cart. It was in the middle of a practice round. And he was like the number 15 or 18 golfer in the country, maybe ninth. He was really high up there. And uh, saying, look, and we know how golf is in college. Like, it's not like tennis. If you're in the top 20 in the national rankings in golf as a college golfer, there's a very good chance you're going to be making a lot of money on the tour. And so I was like, hey, man, I know, like, you're not probably as popular as Jameis Winston or even, you know, whoever, Rashad Green, Clint Trickett, name anybody, uh, Dan Hicks off the football team. But do people understand like how famous and rich you're going to be? And does the other like does the other sex realize that? He didn't really give me a good answer, but he did laugh, and I kind of got the idea that uh, maybe he didn't think he he, he got as enough att- as much attention as he should. But I'm sure he's I'm sure he's great now, just like Kepka, man. It's it's crazy. It's crazy these golfers' lives when they make it. I haven't been able to hammer down everybody. I'm looking. It was actually he was the eighth to do it. I don't know. Okay. Count this for me. Uh, Zinger, Berger, Blixt as one three. Hubert Green, the great Nolan Henke, mm-hmm. uh, Kenny Knox, Brooks Kepka, and Jeff Sluman. How many was that? That was eight. Oh, there you go. There it is, everybody. You're welcome. That's a pretty good list. That's pretty sweet. Also, clarify comments. Uh, we should do. Clarifying Corey's comments, we should have that sponsored by, like, a vision place. Didn't, right. didn't Cameron used to have, like, a glasses place that sponsored some of those things? Maybe we can get them on board. Anyhow, sure. for some reason, like, I would, I'd, I'd, let, I'd let one slide, Corey. Like, if, if it slid past one person, I'd be like, whatever. But I think there's been three people now on YouTube that have been like, what are you talking about, Dalvin Shrinked in the biggest moments? Did you see? So, I don't know if you just want to maybe clarify or you want me to clarify oh, your behalf? Again, I, I, I don't feel like I should have to. Because you I feel like you if you're listening to me, come on. 
if you're a fan of this show or if you know me at all, you understand that the only way I speak is in sarcasm. Like, I don't know that I, I can't have genuine conversations. They're all sarcastic. Like when Brady hit his home run, I'm like, oh, great home run, Brady. Like I just speak in sarcasm. So understand, folks. Come on, man. Dalvin destroyed Clemson. You know, the, 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 the game with the – where 19, he got the, the – 19 carries, 169 yards, four touchdowns. He averaged 8.9 yards per carry, and that was with the robbery – uh, yeah. block in the back. That's like whatever, a 50-yard run seasons. taken away. Yeah. After he run for two straight long runs, he destroyed Clemson. He's the best call, He's the best running back Florida State's ever had. He's awesome. Of course, he didn't shrink in big moments. He was pretty good against Michigan, too. If I remember correctly, he had some nice moments against Miami and Florida. Like, no, man. Dalvin was awesome. That was pure sarcasm. I think that's... I, I, sh I don't know, man. I feel like if you don't pick up that sarcasm... Yeah. Well, Even if I say it, the key to sarcasm, I've said it before, you have to be dry enough that people think there's a chance. Like, it sounds like you're being serious until you hear the words and you're like, oh, obviously he's joking. Right. It'd be like me saying, uh, yeah, I just, I, I didn't think Jamin, I, did, I don't think Jamis played well as a freshman. Like, he, 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 he had a lot of freshman jitters in that pit game. It was obvious. <laughs> right. I mean, that's sarcasm, <laughs> folks. Come on now. Uh, all right. Uh, otherwise, uh, this weekend... There was the Unity Walk. I don't want to talk too much about it because there's really not a lot that I can talk about without upsetting people because it's 2020, uh, and that's how life rolls. But uh, all the interviews are up on Warchant.com, also on our Man, YouTube Man, you busted page. it, by the way. G kudos. You and Ira put in work, and, I yeah, I saw work. You know, I was at a baseball tournament because I'm working hard covering 11-year-old baseball while you guys do the real work. But, yeah, I saw it on uh, Warchant and, uh, and on our YouTube page. It's a lot of... A lot of content, my man. You know, we're not quite. I'm not quite at the level of the Chauffel Clark synergy. I mean, it's something to be. You know, we like for Jimmy V Week. We should see if ESPN wants to get in on it, and we'll auction off. You can, you know, Ultimate Florida State Fan Pack, where you get to hang out with Corey and Ira on an away game football weekend, just to watch these two guys hit the press conference, hit the interviews afterwards, hit the field right. for the post-game wrap-up, get back into the press box. Corey cranks out a column, and then Ira's got some big-picture uh, outlook as well. It's a beautiful thing. But, yeah, Ira and I was just kind of like – it was crazy. Like, I'm doing all the video, and then Ira's just going around like he's a 23-year-old, uh, you know, spring chicken just – snapping photos taking videos tweeting it social media uh, it was beautiful it was good man it was good it felt good to be out there i didn't use the camera literally since that final practice back in yeah, march I bet, right yeah it's it been was, a while it's been a long time. how many uh how many people were out there total like i saw the pictures but i never saw like an estimate i and i, I know it's hard to estimate yeah when i you're looking I, at a throng I of people i might have overshot it i said you know uh I think I said several hundred, which to me is just anything that's over 200 people could be considered several. Maybe I said a couple hundred. Right. Um, it was, I mean, I was, I didn't get to see a lot of the actual uh, march because I was like breaking down my gear. And man, that march, that was a brisk, that was a brisk walk. That was a brisk <laughs> march. I yeah, think yeah. Norvell must have been like, we're counting this as one of our work days because they hoofed it, man. They went from it's the not an easy like it's oh, kind of uphill. uphill, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. There's there's a, you know that guy that rides the, that drives the rickshaw like the bicycle yeah. with the cart on the back of it. Apparently, like he got stuck going up the hill. Ira ends up helping him push it up the hill, and nice. Ira was afraid they might have fallen out because he was like, it was, it was hot out there, and we're all wearing masks and everything because. Uh, you know, we're obeying social distancing, which there's a whole other story about that involving me. Not only I'm back 30 seconds on the job and already making people at Florida State upset. Uh, it was a uh -oh. beautiful thing. Poor Ira. All the good work that Ira does, like I just almost ruin it every single day. I open my mouth when I'm on campus. But I, uh, I was vindicated per usual. But yeah, it was good. I mean, I would say at least over 125 people. Uh, lots, I mean, everybody in the athletic department was there. David Coburn, the athletics director, was there. Uh, Mike Norvell, I saw Kenny Dillingham. I saw uh, Chris Thompson. I saw Ron Dugans. Uh, and, again, this isn't an exhaustive list of people. Sue Simrau was there. I saw her. Okay, yeah. A picture of her. I didn't see her because, again, I wasn't there, but I saw a picture of her with Norvell. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, they got to the Capitol, and, uh, you know, a couple guys spoke. 
uh, it was uh, it was good. It was, it was good to see a, a pretty good turnout, and it went off without a hitch. It was smooth. There was no disruption. There was no uh, you know flare up of anything. So uh, it, it was a good sort of step. I just I think if you see the video that that Ira had of of Mike Norvell basically standing on one of the column, one of the concrete pillars out front of the Unc- Unconquered statue, and pretty much just giving an off the cuff speech. Uh, you know, just, just kind of shows you how important it is that everybody spoke to Marvin, Jane Lars would be, uh, Jalen Goss, Corey Durden, who actually Corey Durden, believe it or not, you know, we've given him grief for the way he uses social media, but he's go- he was the one that kind of organized that. It was his idea to do the march. Um, you know, all these guys are talking about the fact that, you know, they just want to be looked at as being more than just football players. And I, I think they did a really, uh, you know, admirable job of, of doing that, using their platform to, to bring attention to something that's very important to them in a pretty constructive way that really had no uh, blowback at all. And if and there's some people that did because you just – that's the world we live in, man. There's comments on YouTube and War Chant that are just – makes you scratch your head that people would be up at 1145 on a Saturday when there's 40 million people out of work and 100 uh, – 10,000 people have died of a virus that people want to get on there and bash kids for trying to do uh, something that they think is important in their community and for the – uh, society as a whole. But, hey, you know, you can't please everybody, I think somebody said. I think somebody said that somewhere. I heard somewhere. that. I heard somebody say that at one point. That's right. You can't yeah. please everybody. Yep. So uh, that went down on Saturday. Meanwhile, looking ahead and forward, Corey, it's that time. I don't know if you have it in front of you, but the top 40 is dropping today. Okay. So I figured maybe we can just kind of discuss a little bit of that because everyone talks about the top half of it, and we, and we don't have to go through everything here. I wish – do you have your list ahead in front of you? Uh yeah, you want me to look that up? I gotta, yeah. I can find it. I mean, yeah. obviously, it's not like like it won't take me long though. Yeah, I mean, I I probably should have been prepared. I have the actual top forty people, like the the official list. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull mine up as well. That way we can, uh, you know, we can talk about what we 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 said. We should have had our votes weighted a little heavier, but uh, you know, fortunately. That's oh yeah, I got it. Done. I got it here. What do you want me to? Do you want me to read my top my my forty to thirty one? Yeah. Do that because I can't pull mine up for some reason. I'm looking in my scent folder and I can see it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Man, I put the punter 40th. I did too. The Australian one. Yeah, the Aussie. The Aussie boom. Uh, I put him 40th and I put uh, Fitzgerald 39th. Although, do we even think he's going to – I don't know if he's going to win the job from my man. Yeah. Oh, Grody. Oh, the Grote house. The Grote. I don't know if the Grote's – I tell you what, he's not going to give it up without a fight. No. If I know Grote House, and I feel like I do, he's not going to give up that kicking job without a fight. And I think he, I definitely think he's got a better leg, a bigger leg. But uh, you know, it's I think that's going to be a legitimate competition. And let's be honest, when was the last time Florida State had a legitimate kicking competition? It, uh, I mean, they've they went from look the last the last Aguayo that just left wasn't nearly as good as the predecessor. But either way, that you had eight years of Aguayo with almost no challenges. Before that, you had four years of Hopkins. Uh-huh. Before that, you had, what, Gano. Bathia? Gano. Gano, and then Bathia. So I think maybe no, Gano. you had Sismesa. You had Sismesa, Sismesa yeah. Bathia and so the sismesia Gano battle in, like, 08 or 07, because uh, I think Gano was the punter then, but he was trying to be the kicker too. Yeah. That was the last time, and I don't think – I don't know if it was much of a battle because they wanted Gano to concentrate on punting. So, man, We're I tell you what. Willie, Willie said it was a competition week to week, man. That's right. He also Never. said those things about the single digits. Um, but I'm telling you, as, a, as as somebody that's followed Florida State football for a long time, I remember the old kicking battles going into going into camp and being like, hey, it never really seemed to work out. It was always like the, the second or third guy that happened to be lining up for the biggest kick in the season uh, against Miami. Although, uh, crazily, uh, the Janik, I think we talked about Rick, Mark Rick. We talked with Mark Rick about this on yeah. uh, the war chat about right. um, Grammatica was the other kicker. Yep. It was Bill. a Grammatica was Jan- it Bill Janikowski. Or was it Bill or Martin Grammatica? I think it was Bill. Yeah. I want to say, oh. m- it, not Martin, Martin. Martin. Come on, get it right. Martin. Sorry. Um, I think it was Bill. I think it, it was Bill. It was Bill. It was Bill. And like Bill won the short kickoffs and the PATs, and Janikowski was just supposed to be the long guy. And then they realized, no, that's dumb. We're just gonna make uh, we're gonna make Janikowski. But I was watching an old um, '97 game. I guess that would have been Janikowski's freshman year. I can't remember what game it was, but Gramatica kicked like a, a short field goal, and then then did the Gramatica celebration. 
like jumped into the holder's arms and head butted the lineman. No, he and it's like, man, stop. Yeah, did he? no, he did. And I thought, man, how funny would it have been when J- the next when Janikowski made his first kick if he did the same thing and jumped up and tried to jump into the arms of the holder just for like a 31 yard field goal. So, but yeah, that didn't last long. Janikowski ended up winning that job. And but Grammatica had a career in the NFL too. So they yeah. had two. He, of, he's the one that blew his knee out. He jumped in the air in a celebration and blew his knee out in the league. Well, see, I thought that was Martine that did that. That was Bill? I'm like 97% sure. Mm. You want to look that up while I no, tell it? No, either way, it doesn't matter. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? It really doesn't. One Grammatica uh, is one Grammatica. Uh, Bill Grammatica was 10 of 12 in extra points, two for four field goals in the 97 season at Florida State. He played against Southern Cal, Maryland, Clemson, and Miami. Must have been the Clemson game, maybe. it was the Cle- Or maybe the Miami game. I, I watched one of the both of those recently. Um, because that's he how missed, cool I am. He missed a – he was – let's see here. He missed something within 30 to 39 yards against Clemson, mm-hmm. and he missed one against Maryland that was uh, also 30 to 39 yards. Yeah, because that's the only ones he kicked because they would have Janikowski kick the longer ones. Yeah. And like, well, look, if you're not going to be automatic from 31, yeah. then sorry, man, we got the big Polish kid his that field- we're going to ride. His field goal makes were 20 yards against Clemson and 32 yards. Or 32 yards against Clemson, 20 yards against Maryland. Yeah. And yeah. thus concludes the Bill right. Grammatica segment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was 40. Uh, who do you got at 39, big guy? Uh, 39, I got, uh, like I said, I got Fitzgerald. Oh, Fitzgerald. So I the went, last two are the two kickers. Okay. I went with uh, Deontay Sheffield just because I think this is going to be a very run-heavy offense. And I think like a third-string running back – is going to maybe catch a swing pass on a third down that'll help keep a drive alive. And to me, that'll probably be important enough to be the 30. That'll get you the 39th spot on this list. But you corrected me when we had uh, discussions off air about basically, well, Aslan, don't forget there's 17 freshman running backs coming in, to which I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And they they did gush about Lawrence Toa Philly uh, from Pinellas Park. So my next one, 38, because I looked at my list in its entirety, and I'm like, man, I don't have – and I didn't. I don't think I – now I'm looking at it. I only had one other freshman on the list. And I'm like, man, there's got to be a freshman that's going to be in the top 40 that's going to make an impact. So I went with uh, Demory Tate, oh. who, who, was, who was the most high, highly ranked recruit that they signed. But he's a DB. I know. There's, there, and there's can I a say loaded? million of them. Can we no, say they're loaded? No, no, no. You can't say any, any, any other than – I, no, you can't say any any position on this team is loaded. I just don't think you can do that when you have a losing record. That's like forbidden. Okay. Uh, verboten. So uh, I have Demory Tate is 38 because I think that they're going to find I, – I think I think they'll try to find a way to get that kid on the field. Also, I think it helps recruiting the, the present class when, you're show, when you can show them, hey, look what our freshman did on the field today. They're, you know, you can't just play all upperclassmen. So I do think – and if that kid's good enough, they'll find some, they'll find some run for him. Yeah. I went with Quayshawn Fuller at 38. Just because I mm. think there's, you know, somebody that D tackle spot's going to have to give some some relief to Corey and Marvin and Robert Cooper. I think he's like that guy. And I really wasn't that high on Quayshawn Fuller when he first reported to campus, but uh, he flashed a little bit in those first three days. I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but there was a couple moments I remember writing down in my notepad with him. Uh, flashing a little bit. I know they were they were quite high on him. It was him and Derek Hunter. They're both from the same part of Florida, that Fort Myers area. Uh, and Hunter went to A and M. I think he might have been. I think he might have transferred out by now or put his name in the portal. But uh, everyone was like, "Oh yeah, Fuller's better." I'm like, "Well, is he really? Or are we just saying that because we lost Hunter?" Uh, right. I, I like the way he plays. At 37, I go Raymond Woody the third. I got him a little higher. I don't have Fuller on my list. I've got uh, on 37. I've got Brendan Gant. Okay. Okay. I don't have BG on my list. I yeah, like and too. again, I he's a guy that showed flashes last year. You know, he I know he's a part of a loaded secondary, but he he did show flashes where was he that made sarcasm? some plays. Was that sarcasm? It was, by the folks. Way? Folks, guess what? Dalvin was good against Clemson too. <laughs> um, um, he did show some flashes, and I think he's physical. I just I don't know where he. I don't know exactly where he fits. If they're going to ride with maybe a, a an upperclassman. Um, and I, you know, I, I guess he's a, str- a strong safety or whatever, whatever term they give that in this defense. But I, you know, I, I was impressed enough with him at times last year to think, yeah, with a, with another spring practice under his belt in a whole month of preseason practice, he should be part of the rotation. But then they didn't have the spring practice. 
But still, there were flashes, right, where you thought he looked pretty good? Uh, I mean, there was a lot of For a freshman, targetings. right? It's there hard. Some targetings. There was, there was a lot but, of targetings. But, hey, you know what? You'd rather, say, you'd rather say whoa than giddy up. You, you ain't wrong. He, you ain't wrong. He's, going, he's going to lay the wood. Yeah. I mean, he was one of the more highly ranked guys in that yeah. 19 class. I mean, Alabama was hot on his trail for a little bit. I do like Brendan. I mean, if he can if he can uh, do a little more controlled chaos with the way he plays, uh, that'll be a nice piece for that uh, defensive backfield than Marcus Woodson. Correct. I agree. Yeah. 36, you want to go? Is oh, is that what we're doing? Yeah. I say two, and then you say two. It's like well, no, the, one of the back. snake draft. Well, you kind um, of you you know you went one, you went bang bang. So then yeah. I went. Yeah. All right. So then uh, thirty six. I have Stephen Dix Jr. Ooh. Uh, who I think there's a chance, and there's somebody else coming up here that uh, in a couple more picks for me that I think that there might be competing for the same position. But there's a chance my man Stephen Dix Jr. in this list next year will be in the top ten. Ooh. Look at that. There's a chance, man. I I really did like what I saw. Uh, I, I mean, he's very intelligent, which is a big deal at that position at linebacker. And uh, he seemed to diagnose things really quickly. He's physical. Uh, his coaches love him. Like, that helps, too, get on the field that your coaches love you and can't stop praising you. Uh, so I, I think that guy has a chance to be an anchor for the defense for a couple years. I just Maybe not this year. I, but I just think at this time next year he has a chance to be, like I said, one of the top 10 or 12 guys. This sounds terrible, but like he just seems too good to be true just because of everything you said and how much this team struggled the last year when he was committed to them. And it felt like he had a really good relationship with Raymond Woody as well as Willie Taggart. So I felt like he committed to those two more so maybe than even Florida State. So the fact that like – Florida State was able to hang on to him. It's like, I mean, I went to his high school as part of the spring tour last year with Michael Langston. I mean, the guy's like, he's Adonis. He's just he's chiseled. He's ripped. I mean, he's big, and it just I couldn't believe it. I'm like, the fact that they hung on to him uh, made me believe, like, well, or how could this guy not be like a high four star rivals one hundred and fifty guy that Clemson and you know Georgia are all after? But that never seemed to really kind of be the case. There is a video of him at one of the rivals camps like two years ago where he was struggling quite quite a bit, but it, it was a camp. I mean, they are just in their underwear practically. Uh, when the pads come on, uh, they liked what they saw, this coaching staff. So, uh, yeah, and I'll be honest. Pick, like, it's a good pick, though. I like it. Good pick. Good pick. And I'm not saying that just because I was talking them up. Like, um, no. I don't necessarily really care that much what they look like with their shorts on. I mean, you want to see some athleticism, yeah. and you want to be able to see some of them, but you can't tell how quickly – um, like, what did Vince Williams look like in those things? Right. Vince Williams has been in for a decade. Like, it's how quickly you – it's how physical you are and how quickly you can diagnose a play and how – whatever you have to do to get there to make the tackle. That's what that – that's what a lot of that position is. And you can't tell that in uh, cutoff, cutoff shorts. Yeah. I don't know why they had to be Come cutoff off. shorts. Yeah, there's <laughs> – Spandex these days. Yeah, I, <laughs> spandex, that's right. I went with Travis J at 36. Okay. Which, I think okay. might have been a little bit low, low on the list. He's a little higher on my high list, but not too, number. not not that much higher. Uh, forty-five. I went with Renardo Green. He's Ooh, a guy okay. I thought that flashed. That was what a, a that's loaded a secondary. Another one. I mean, I, that's what I said. That's they're what gonna, I said. It's like twelve guys. Well, hey, let me go ahead and let me spill the beans on thirty-five and thirty-four. So thirty-five, Renardo Green. Thirty-four. I went Isaiah Bolden. Yeah, I didn't have Bolden on my list, which was probably dumb. Um, oh, I probably should have had, because, especially because he didn't he return some kicks last year too. Yeah, yeah. So kick, he might kicks. be part of the return game. Yeah. And it uh, place with with Norvell. We know how important that is with him. If he's a part of the return game, that could make him worth uh, a top forty pick right there. So I, I'm not saying I forgot about him because I didn't, but I just I I didn't see a spot when I when I look at all these other names that I would put him ahead of these other guys. Yeah. Except maybe this one coming up. You tell me, Carlos Becker. Oh, at 35 I have him at 35, yeah, 35. 35. Dude, Carlos Becker, there's no reason why he cannot be a very productive football player. He, you talk about flash, he's like 6'2", 6'3", 195. He's fast. I mean, he's really fast. He runs to the ball. Uh, the injuries have been the real bugaboo. I I I like it. That there's a lot of upside there. That's that's a, there's a good cliche word we haven't used yet. There you go. There's yep. a lot of upside with him. I hope so. I'm rooting for. I'm rooting like heck for the kid. He's a, he's a fifth year guy. It'd be real nice to see him. Uh, maybe catch some of that Giorgio Newberry in a bottle and uh, have a nice little. Uh, yeah, fifth it'd year. be nice. Yeah, the the fifth year guys that haven't really done much their first four years. I you could probably count on one hand. 
how many guys in the last 20 years have like had a breakthrough their fifth season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it happens occasionally. I, and I know this isn't like a, a guy that's an all American or an all time great player, but LaMarcus Brutus was like forgotten yeah. when he was on the team. And then his last year and a half, he was a solid player for Florida state. Um, so then 34, I have Jaleel McCray. Ooh, and I right. think he's another guy. I think it's going to be – there's a chance McCray or Dix. And right now I would lean just towards McCray because of the experience. And plus I think he's a good player. Um, he just didn't play a lot last season. Uh, but remember his spring, the spring of his freshman year, he was like the talk of the camp. He would intercept one or two passes a day, which is good and bad. I mean, that kind of showed you uh, <laughs> things on both sides of the ball. But I just think that guy has, has a little bit of play, little bit of playmaking ability. Um, and you know, again, talking to him, really impressive dude, the, the linebacker group, man, the, the, if nothing else, they're, they're smart and, uh, hopefully they can diagnose things quickly and they can understand concepts and get the defense. But, uh, but I, I think he, again, has a chance to be, he might be by the time this season ends, considering if he starts or not, I might had him, I might have had him 20 spots too low. All right. You know, I think he's a guy that could be a top 15 or top 18 player on the team. Um, if he's as good as I think he might be. He's on my list. A little okay. higher, though. Okay. A little bit All higher. Right. A little bit higher. Who you, who you got at 33? Uh, Warren Thompson. Ooh, come on, man. You're like, uh, you've, you've got stock in Warren Thompson. You've spun him off. You've syndicated him off the <laughs> Tamori and Terry uh, so show my you've got thought, going. So my thought was like, okay, I, I, do, I was really, really impressed with him. But is he going to – they're not going to play a bunch of four wide sets. And right. you know Terry yeah, is going to be on the field. Yeah. And I think DJ is going to be on the field a lot. Yeah. And Keyshawn Helton's going to be on the field a lot. Pokey's going to be on the field. Yeah. So where does Warren Thompson fit in? Is he just coming in to be Terry's backup um, out wide? Yeah. Or are they going to run him on the other side? Because that's it, man. I'm just telling you, folks, I know we've been wrong in the past, but in this was, what was it, three months ago now, three and a half months ago, but watching Warren Thompson run was almost jaw drop. It's a not even run. It's a delight. It, it was a delight. It was a, it was a pleasure. So it was, a, I told him that after practice, like, Hey man, it is a pleasure watching you run. Um, no, it's not even the running. Like he's fast and he's big. It's the, it's control, the in and out of the breaks. Control, yeah. yeah. The quick, he moves like DJ. He moves like DJ, but he's six, five or whatever he is, or six, three, two fit. I mean, he just, there's a chance he could be a real, real weapon. Well, hopefully he's got everything um, whatever the stuff he was going through with Willie last fall, hopefully that's been knocked out and he's happy to be playing football and happy to be a part of the Florida State program. But I'm telling you, man, that guy looked like he had put in a lot of work in the offseason and was really impressive, in, you know, admittedly in just three days. 33. But, I, but again, I just was wondering about the – I was wondering about the at-bats he would get. Well, maybe he'll be like our Chris Carter. All he does is catch touchdowns. You know, maybe it'll be you a, just lob it up to him in the red zone. Yeah. I feel you. That'd be nice to have, like, a goal line package. That'd be cool. Yeah, like Greg Carr. You remember him? Exactly. I just saw he's the head coach yeah, somewhere. congratulations. That is at his alma mater, I think, North Marion High School. There you go, Greg Carr. Nice. I don't know. It would be funny off. if, like, his his whole offense is just jump balls. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes recruits kids four off the verticals. basketball team. Yeah. <laughs> gets, four four, gets four basketball forwards <laughs> and just sends them down. Hey, this is what we did in college. Oh, man. That'd be awesome. Uh, 33, I went with Maurice Smith. Okay. Uh, I think I th- I thought the original plan was he was going to play center, but I think he got some burn at guard on the interior and just obviously somebody, you know, we know how offensive lines work. I mean, not so much here, but I mean everyone gets hurt. Uh people get cycled in. I just feel like he's maybe one of those guys short list behind, you know, Dante and and Brady Scott, which I guess you know we'll we'll pencil into the other guard spot. So, and then he can he can play center as well, so you know, if one of those guys falls into a doghouse, then he finds himself, uh, you know, one snap away from getting in there. So I went with him at 33. Uh, 32, this one of my more controversial picks. I went okay. with my guy who I, I who I didn't do with top 40 last year, but I joked that if I did, I would have put him at number five. That's that's Keyshawn Helton, 32. Okay. Him at two th- just the injury, man. You know, I, I went on a really weird diatribe monologue about it uh, on the last show. But, uh, you know, those those – you get air casted and carted off. I just I'm not going to put a lot of hope and expectation on your shoulder uh, less than you know 12 months after it happened. But I think what he brings intangible wise, and I, we speak maybe too much about that sometimes. It's it's uh, it's a real thing, 
and uh, he's the kind of guy that you like having out front of your program and one of the leaders in your meeting room. So uh, Keyshawn will always have value as long as he's uh, within you know arm's length, six feet of his teammates. And I think you would agree, though, that there is a chance, depending on how he's utilized and how healthy he is, which we, I, think, I mean, at least I think that he'll be, he'll be ready to go, but maybe not. I get your trepidation there. But I think you think, too, that if there's a chance that things work out and he fits into this offense, he could be like the 10th most important player. Like, I think they could, I think these guys, this coaching staff, will really be able to utilize him. Yeah, I, I think I, they'll get him in matchups, whether they, they, they put line him up in the backfield and motion him out to be with a linebacker or a safety. I just think there's a chance they'll be able to get this guy a lot of one-on-one matchups. And he's pretty, he can be pretty dynamic with the ball in his hands. Yeah, I mean, if, if DJ Matthews could play with the desire that Keyshawn Helton does, it would be just lights out. I mean, DJ yeah, but we saw that out of DJ. I, I really did think we saw that out of DJ in the, in the spring, the limited spring. I thought that guy, to me, he was the most impressive receiver on the, uh, out of the group. Like, you know, Terry was going up against Asante Samuel, which he won some and lost plenty. And, uh, and DJ was going up against Travis J, which did not work out well for Travis J. But I was really impressed with DJ, everything about him in the spring. Yeah, I just, you know, it's a good problem. I think Warren kind of gives you that compliment back up to Tamorian. And I think, I don't know if like DJ and, and, Keyshawn are both going to maybe play the same sort of role in this offense. I just think I think about those guys like slot guys when you're going three wide, uh, when you have a tight end back there. So, and then I, I really think Pokey is going to be uh, quite involved uh, mm-hmm. in the offense. So, yep. uh, but yeah, I, I can see Keyshawn definitely making me eat crow on uh, my my pick there. So, so my thirty my thirty second. That's where we're at right now. Thirty two. Yes, correct. Yep. Is uh, Dennis Briggs. Oh. Which one? Uh, the second? Ju- junior. Junior? Okay. Yeah, see, how about that? Like, that's how little Ira thinks of my current football knowledge of the Florida State program is that we were doing the happy hour thing on Friday, and nobody, I don't think any I, – I, did you hear my joke? I think so, yeah. One of the callers talked about – or Ira was talking about Dennis Briggs, and I said, which one, junior or senior? And Ira thought I was asking if he was a junior or a senior. <laughs> And he's and so I nobody reacted at all to my joke. And those Zoom calls can be hard sometimes, or what? It's not Zoom, right. whatever those things are. Because if you talk over someone, it get cuts the other person out, so you don't always hear if somebody's talking at the same time. Right. So uh, nobody reacted, and I'm like, man, that was a pretty solid joke, and nobody reacted. So then I asked, and of course Ira had heard it, but he thought I was just asking if he was a junior or a senior. Yeah. No. So Corey knows better. Corey yeah, knows. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Red shirt freshman. So, what do you think? You thinking him has like uh, edge setting defensive end, or you think he's going to sneak in there and maybe play on the interior? I think I really like the first four guys that they have on that defensive line. Um, but when it comes to importance, man, they better find a fifth one. Yeah. And uh, and you, you hope this guy's it. Again, he he made a few plays last year, not a ton, um, but he showed up occasionally. And you hope he takes that next step. Where he's a guy that can, because uh, number one, you can't trust all four of them are going to stay healthy. And I don't know. I, I don't know if they're going to move him inside or keep him out. Um, he could be a bigger D end, uh, I guess, or maybe they transform him into D tackle. I can't get a read on that. They have him but, listed as defensive end. He's six four, two seventy two. I just feel he's kind of like poor man's Mario Edwards Jr. Right, not senior. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, so many juniors and seniors. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see that, I guess. Yeah. You, you just hope that he shows enough, like what I like to call fast twitch, right? Right. That he can get around those, he can get around some tackles and make some plays and not just, you know, they've had, they've had plenty of defensive ends that just use brute force. I know he's not going to be Brian Burns, but you hopefully he can bend and get around and get around an edge sometimes and make plays uh, on the quarterback. Man, you know, we just listed off nine players. One last one, like what? Well, you talk about a guy like Dennis Briggs and you have him at 32 on your list and it's like that that's a good thing. Like that makes you feel kind of good. Like there's there's reasonable belief that a guy like that's going to contribute in a positive manner. Like I don't want to go back and tell you folks how we ranked players in years past, but uh, I feel like we're off to a good start thus far. And uh, to round off the first batch of players, for me 31, uh, House Warner, third of his lineage, Leonard, Leonard Warner the 3rd at 31. Okay. Did he make? Right. The, is he on the? Did he make the top forty? I don't think so. He did not make mine. 
Yeah, um, no offense, Leonard. Hey, again, Leonard, prove me wrong, man. We're we're both from Gwinnett. Yeah, prove me I don't wrong. Think he did. No, he, uh, no, yeah, he did not. He did not make the top forty. By the way, I was joking, but people because I it's it's a weird thing to be sarcastic about. But, uh, Briggs is a sophomore. I said freshman to be funny, but then knowing how little people understand my sarcasm, and also I get things wrong all the time with the current team. I did want to specify that I did know that he was a sophomore, but I looked it up just now just to make sure. Okay. Um, so he's a red shirt sophomore. Um, my thirty one is well, real quick. Travis. Oh, oh, all right. Sorry, sorry. No. Uh, well, who, who would be your your three starting linebackers right now? You would think like Amari, Amari, McCray, uh, and McCray, and uh, Emmett Rice. Oh, that's right, the E Ricer. Yeah, we still got the E Ricer, man. I think he's yeah. gonna have a big year. I think he's gonna put up some big numbers. He's on my list. Yeah, Warner's probably. I, I would say now, looking back at this, that's probably the do over I would want. For my first ten. Hey man, but he can do it. He, he's got some. He's got some skill. He's played before. He's a he's a wily vet. He can make some plays. Uh, Thirty one. I have Jordan Travis. Okay. Um, that that obviously should tell you that I don't think he's going to start because if he was going to start, we had this long conversation on our on the video. You guys will see when we drop it about the uh, about the top forty that we did. But I don't think he's going to start. He could. I mean, he might win the job. But even if he doesn't start, I I am certain which I shouldn't be, but I'll go ahead and say it. I'm certain he'll have a package. He'll, he'll, he's going to make a, uh, an impact on the football team, on the offense. He's going to be utilized. He's going to be used. I'm more confident that he'll be used in some capacity than I think I am of any of the other quarterbacks. You know what I mean? Like there's a chance, maybe not a great one, but there's a chance that James Blackman and Chubba Purdy don't play. One of them doesn't play at all this season. And Rodemaker. But I think whoever wins the starting job, even if it's not Jordan Travis, I think they'll have some moments where Jordan Travis comes into the game. That's just me. It's just me talking out loud, thinking that he's going to have – they're going to utilize him. and so They're going to see the Boston College game. They're going to see what he did. Uh, I know it was limited, but in, in the Sun Bowl uh, or whoever they played in, whoever they played after Boston College. Was that Alabama State? Yes. Correct. Yeah, yeah. The, big, the big bowl clinching win. And – um. And realize, okay, we can use, we can utilize this guy's athleticism a little bit, even if he can't throw it anywhere. Which I'm not saying that, but even if they don't think he can throw it, like the previous staff obviously didn't think he could throw it, they'll still utilize him for his legs. Yeah, I do wonder. So, are you thinking more of kind of, you know, not so much like, all right, third series, we're going to put him in. Correct. Within- no, I think it's more like, okay, we got a second and six at the opponent's ten yard line. Yeah. Let's run wild trav. Okay. And put him in there, and uh, it's a look that they haven't prepared for. It's a quarterback that can move. It's a quarterback that can run. Um, again, he's not Lamar Jackson. He's not this crazy athletic specimen, but he's good enough in that that he can keep defenses honest, and I think they'll want to exploit that. It might not it might even be every game, but I'm, I, I think they're going to try to utilize him. Yeah. It's one of those weird things where you try to go back or I try to go back and look at kind of historical stuff to a certain degree at Memphis and, you know, they, they had Brady White, and before that they had Riley Ferguson, so he's always sort of felt good about his quarterback. So this is going to probably be a bit of a brave new world for Mike Norvell and Kenny Dillingham uh, from having some, at least as we sit here and talk about it in June, uncertainty at quarterback. So, um, you know, they've I had think, guys that they really like, so I don't know what their thoughts are on yeah, having these and I, packages and stuff. And but yeah, I don't point. think And I don't think they go into a, a – taking over a program and take over an offense thinking, okay, who's going to be our quarterback that we put out, put out there to run around a little bit. Yeah. Right. I just think having watched what we've watched the last three years, they're going to have to realize very quickly what their O line can and can't do. And when it's short yardage and you get in a normal formation with a quarterback in a tailback and a fullback or a H back or whatever you're going to do, and just think you're going to blow people off the ball on third and three, there's no chance. No third and two. It's not happening. Prove me wrong again, offensive lineman. I know you guys all listen to this in the in the position room. Prove me wrong, but that hasn't happened in years. So you're going to have to be creative and come up with different ways to move the ball in third and two. And I don't know if, uh, it, say, Blackman's the starter. I don't know you're going to call a lot of d- design quarterback draws for him, right. but you could for Travis just occasionally, just to keep defenses on us and to move the chains. He was good at that, man. He was, I was really impressed with the way he ran the ball last year, except then- for the Florida game. Yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. he got tattooed. Well, you know, maybe he'll be like a Dan Kendra. Just keep running him, running him, running him, and then when you get to that New Year's Six Bowl, boo! 
bombs away, you know? Dan Kendra. Actually, no. Yeah. Didn't he? We talking about the, was your whole big thing, Sugar Bowl, all year long, Kendra, quarterback no, sneaks? come on. Come on, Aslan. You got to watch those things better. Again, though, kudos to how you did all the war chats. I don't know how many more we're going to do. I think it's going to be more of periodic. Oh, year Outson. Now of I'm weekly. sorry, Rooster. Rooster, I'm sorry. It was Rooster. Outson. Rooster. Yeah, but it, it wasn't a bombs away. It wasn't, and then they threw a ball. It was just every time, for the people that don't know, we, when we talked to Rick, um, Mark Rick, about the 99 Georgia Tech game, there was a play in that game where he put Outson in to do a QB sneak because they didn't want Winky doing QB sneaks because he had broken his neck the year before that. <laughs> that makes sense, right? So they put an Outson to take the hit. They Every time it was third and short or fourth and short, Outson came in and did a QB sneak. Well, in the national championship game against Virginia Tech, a huge moment in the game. They're trailing in the fourth quarter. It's fourth and one right around midfield. They put Outson in the game. Everybody assumes it's a QB sneak. Instead, he, run, he calls a toss sweep to Miner, who gets 20 yards, and then they get a personal foul on top of that. They score two plays later, and they win the game. So there, that was a quick summation. I, thank you. Way, so, way to clean that one up. Good yeah, job. But you're like, Kendra. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Dan Kendra? <laughs> yeah, so we got it. We, we cleared it up. All right, there we go. All right, there it is. That's a wrap on that one. That's the, the first batch of 10. Again, Corey, Nobody Ira. even asked for that, but we gave it to him anyway, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. Corey, Ira, Gene, Jeff Cameron, uh, as well as me, were in the mix in, in creating the official top 40. But uh, go to warchant.com to see uh, the official first 10 on that list. There's also a nice companion video with uh, Corey schooling Ira per usual, uh, as well as Jeff and Gene's also on it as well. So it's uh, cool to get their thoughts. You know, they don't they don't go bang, bang, bang on every single one because that's boring. I and mean, we can do right. boring on a podcast that's 50 minutes long. Uh, but the video, we want to make it a little bit more compelling, but they make their uh, their sort of cases. Is there anybody now looking back in your first 10 that you're kind of like, eh, maybe I, uh, I, would, I take a mulligan on? No, I don't, I don't question you. myself. No. Firm in your convictions. Exactly like right. It. Exactly right. I haven't, uh, made a, I haven't made a bad decision in my life yet. I'm uh, not going to start now. I like it. All right. Hey, man, well, I'm, I'm done. I got really nothing much left to add. We'll probably do, I guess we'll probably do a live show. Maybe we'll do it on Tuesday so we have that for Wednesday. Uh, and then we can, you know, do like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type deal as we do a uh, okay. uh, over-the-air production meeting. Was there anything of consequence in your life or Florida State that happened this weekend that I didn't do my job and talk about? Uh, I'm sure there is, but I can't think of anything right now. Oh, um, so Antonio Velez, senior Florida State pitcher, lefty. Um, if people no. don't quite he remember signed? him. Well, yeah, but I thought that was a good thing. Yeah, he signed with the Marlins. <sighs> Um, for 20 which, grand for 20 grand which is a bummer but again some kids and i'm not saying this is velez but when you're in college this long you you know the money almost becomes less relevant than getting your clock start like getting in pro ball so you uh. the quicker you can get to the major leagues i'm not saying there's a there i'm not saying he's a definite major league guy but there's a chance he's a lefty he's a, throws hard he's a crafty yeah. lefty that can throw pretty hard so um it, so he'll always be remembered uh, not a storied Florida State career. Not that he, I mean, he was good. He just, it, he wasn't like he was Paul Wilson. But uh, his his relief performance in Baton Rouge oh, last yeah, year man. to send them to uh, Omaha was uh, really one of the more remarkable things I've ever watched a, a Florida State pitcher do. I, I feel like it was like six or seven shutout innings of one hit, two hit, because Florida State wasn't doing anything on the other end. No. But he kept shutting down a really good LSU offense in that stadium at night. Um, every inning he'd go out there with the game on the line and would shut him down. So he uh, he did all right by Noel fans. But, yeah, uh, Florida State baseball announced on uh, on Sunday that he had he had signed with the Marlins. And I it didn't say a price, but I assume he got 20000 because he had a little bit of leverage. He could have come back. So we lost our ace, C.J. Van Eyck. Mm -hmm. We lost our best middle reliever that can eat innings in Antonio Velez, and we lost our best front line lefty in Change Rohan. Awesome. Yeah, they got they got some dudes though. They got I don't I, I don't think meet meets all that he, he, because they knew Van Eyck was gone. So that was that was Come a back. Given. Siege. Siege. So, Work yourself into a top ten pick. You're at one point seven million right now, I think. You know, after the tax man, your agent, you buy yourself mm -hmm. a car, man, you're under a million. What do you you can't live off of that? Come back. Work your way, top right. ten, you get three point two mil or so, then you're living the dream. Come back, yep. CJ. You're right, buddy. You're right. You tell him. You tell him. CJ, you don't have to sign. Nobody's holding a gun to your head. Yeah, man. Come on. Come back. Come back and play for like a 30% scholarship. 
Do that. Let's go, CJ. Quit being so selfish. I'm saying. I'm saying, man. I said the same thing about Derwin. Stop being selfish. Come back, man. Make your <laughs> right. leave a better legacy. Leave I'm tired better of all legacy. these guys being selfish I'm tired, and uh, trying of, to make millions of dollars. It's ridiculous. And tired of it. I did see they flipped a kid, I think, from Florida with the first name Jackson, who's a pitcher. So that's the only. That's all the scouting I need to know. Sign me up. I tell job, you what, me. man. Good job. And me. I, I know my son's name, and I know. That, I mean, there's a million Bradys at all these baseball tournaments we go to. Yeah. I tell you what, buddy, Jackson. The first name Jackson, that thing is the new Michael. Yeah, like that. That name is everywhere. Like <laughs> there's ki- there's teams with four Jacksons on them. Yeah. I mean, it is c- remarkable how many Jacksons there are. And I guess it's after Deshaun Jackson. I think either is that him who or... everybody is that who he, everybody's naming their kid after is Deshaun Jackson. I thought it was Keith Jackson. Uh, Could the, be Keith. The tight end for the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, a really good career right. as well. The old, you know. the old Oklahoma Sooner tight end. Yeah, yeah. that's probably it. That, that Keith Jackson. That makes sense. Yeah. Or Reggie. Yeah, that guy too. That guy, he wasn't bad either. He was not yeah. bad either. All right, yeah, so baseball team, they'll be they'll be fine, right? Basically. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have a lot, a lot of talent, a lot so, of pitching. Reese is back. Elijah will be back. Tyler's there. It was uh, funny. I was when I was talking Nelson, to me. Real, sorry, Matt, yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt Nelson back. should be back. Okay. Um, All right, man, let's uh, go. But Florida's number one and number two pitchers are also coming back, well, which what? not in a million years would have happened without this. So uh, let's just say me wasn't all that thrilled about that. But he doesn't have to face their weekend starters anyway. Hey, man, all I know is me is undefeated against University of Florida. 1,000 winning owns percentage. Them. Owns he them. owns O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan can't sleep. Can't sleep. Yeah, exactly. He hadn't been on sleep for three months. They, they lost their last game, and it was to Florida State. <laughs> All right, man. We'll be back in some form or the other, most likely a live one on Tuesday that will adapt for a Wednesday program. For Corey Maslon, and again, I hope you had a great birthday weekend, Corey. Everyone wish you happy birthday, so we're glad Thanks, that you buddy. made out in one piece. He's Corey yeah, Maslon. Thanks for listening to Wake Up War Chant, probably presented by Zaxby's indescribably good. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.